Hi and welcome. It is a beautiful Saturday today and in most Jamaican households on Saturday we cook soup and today we're going to cook a beautiful roasted chicken soup Jamaican style. So on our table today as you can see we have a chicken and it's a roasted chicken which I got from my local grocery store. It's just a traditional roasted chicken. There's no lemon pepper or anything like that. And then we have two celery sticks and we're going to put a piece of this white yam in there and next to it we have some butternut squash and traditionally we would use pumpkin but available in my grocery store is butternut squash and we have a medium onion, one turnip, two large potatoes and then this is what we call chocho and known in America as coyote squash. We're also going to add a couple of green onions or scallions, carrots, and of course my addiction, scotch bonnet peppers. And to that we're going to season it with some fresh thyme and pimento, four cloves of garlic that we're going to mince finely, two teaspoons of garlic powder, three teaspoons of Italian seasoning and then three heaped teaspoons of chicken bouillon and I like to use the Belladin bouillon brand and this is the roasted chicken flavor and it just adds a huge punch of flavor. I really like this one and then if necessary we'll add some seasoned salt but typically the bouillon adds enough salt and we don't have to add anything else. So we're going to go ahead now and remove the meat from the bone and then we'll boil the carcass for about 20 minutes and then we'll start adding our vegetables. So let's get started. As you can see we have our onions chopped, our carrots sliced, our celery chopped and our turnips cut and we also finally chopped our four cloves of garlic and as I've said before I like to do that about 15 minutes prior to cooking so we can enjoy the anti-cancer benefits of the garlic and we're going to add these to the, add these to the stock water now in our pot including our seasonings and we'll add the vegetables a little later. Here's our chicken stock been boiling for about 20 minutes now we're going to drain and remove the bones and skin and add our seasonings and our first set of vegetables. Okay so now we've drained the carcass out of the stock and this stock, wow it's hot. <laughs> okay we've drained the carcass out of the stock and we're going to add it back to the pan and you see it has a beautiful golden color and that is simply just from the seasoning of the chicken and I've added nothing else to it at this point and then we're going to turn it back on high and we are going to go ahead and add our turnips our garlic and our celery carrots and onions and then we're going to let this simmer for about 10 minutes just to get the flavors infused into the stock. You could have browned these and sweat them out a little bit with a little bit of oil but to make this as quick as possible I would just go ahead and add them to the stock. And in addition we're going to add our garlic powder uh, Italian seasoning, our pimento, and our fresh thyme, scotch bonnets, green onions, and also our bouillon.
stir this in real good always be careful not to pop the scotch bonnet and we're going to cover this and let it simmer uh, for about seven or eight minutes and then we'll be back so with the butternut squash you gotta be careful you need a pretty sharp knife and this outer skin is very hard so you want to take it off in small strips and watch your fingers cut the bottom see it's quite leathery quite hard Also, you're going to want to remove the seeds from the center. Here we go, remove the seeds from the center. Now this is a, a really firm squash. So you want to cut it into pretty small pieces or it's going to take a very long time to cook. So strips about an inch and a half to an inch should be good. And I like to make some a little smaller because I want some of it to break up and smash out into the soup because it adds flavor and texture. Okay. So with the yam, the skin is very tough. It's not like a potato. So it's quite thick and you're going to have to use a pretty sharp knife and peel this off and there's a couple of different varieties of yam that I like to use I like to use yellow yam as well unfortunately I just can't get it here in this state so I settle for this white yam and it's quite good but it does cook fast so I usually leave it in very pretty large chunks and then I don't put it in until much later on. As I said in the beginning of the video, this is what we call chocho in Jamaica. And here in the United States, it is referred to as coyote squash. And it is part of the squash family. And there's a couple of things about this that um, I find very interesting. Um, this particular squash is used in Jamaica a lot of people boil it or they juice it and they use it to reduce their blood pressure so it has uh, excellent medicinal purposes it's very inexpensive to buy it's easily available in a lot of the various different grocery stores it's easy to peel it will get a little sticky on your hands but um, some soap and water will wash that right off but we peel this for the soup and it's quite firm so you can slice it quite small and it won't break up and here's the, the seed that I've taken out of it put it to one side and I usually cut it in strips approximately uh, half an inch to an inch thick see not too small not too big all right as you can see our first set of veggies the carrots the onions scotch bonnet turnip spring onions garlic uh, their time to bathe smells absolutely amazing just amazing now we're going to go ahead and add our other vegetables so here goes our coyote squash or chocho or yam Uh, 
there's a butternut squash and finally our potatoes now I'm going to go ahead and spot my scotch bonnets which are right here leave them on top that way they won't get burst in the cooking process and we're going to bring this back to a boil and let simmer for another 15 minutes so no Jamaican soup is finished unless there is a dumpling in it so we're going to make two dumplings today typically I add just spinners to my soup but I'm also going to show you how to make a soft dumpling as well so in this bowl I have two cups of plain flour and one tablespoon of cornmeal and in this bowl I have two cups of self-rising flour and I'm going to add just a tablespoon of butter to this and we mix with water into a dough and I'm going to show you how to I'm going to mix the cornmeal it's all done with your fingers you don't need any utensils for this mix the cornmeal and flour together and I'm going to go ahead and add the water so we're just going to mix this water in uh, depends on the flour I have this particular one is quite salty I would add salt but no need in this brand so we're going to keep on adding water until we get a nice doughy texture when we were kids mum used to make enough dumplings put enough dumplings in the pot so we could all have at least one or two a piece and then my dad used to really like the soft ones so she'd make the soft ones for him but then we end up wanting some of those too <laughs> So we're going to knead this really well. So we got a pretty firm dough. I used to have a brother that used to try to steal a dumpling at the pot before we get served dinner. He wasn't quick enough, he used to get caught. Boy did he get in trouble. <laughs> okay this looks really good it's a nice firm dough it's not overly wet just add your water slowly yep nice firm dough okay so you're going to take off a small piece about that size roll it in your hands rub it out depends on how big you want them this is a nice size spinner or you could do a little smaller that way you stretch your dough a little bit depends on how much flour you have and how many kids you got it could be a little smaller doesn't matter there's no rules to this a lot of people don't even particularly care for spinners I know my sister likes her dumplings done like the old-fashioned discs like this so you can do them like that your choice but I kind of like sometimes using very small spinners like in my stew peas I'll take a very small piece smaller than that and roll it out very small piece but sister's here today for dinner so we are having old-fashioned dumplings and I have to make quite a few of them because my sister likes her dumplings so here we go let's make a a disc out of it and by adding these two will significantly thicken the soup there's no need to add cornstarch or anything like that it's just the flour off of this will significantly thicken it and we don't like watery soups we like them nice and thick and hearty Here's our finished dumplings, ready to go in the pot. And let's go ahead and do the soft ones. So as I said before, this is two cups of self-rousing flour and one teaspoon of butter. And we're just going to 
press the, the butter out throughout the flour. Doesn't have to be perfect. You just need small pieces of butter throughout of it. I love these dumplings too. And these are great on anything. If you made a stew, or uh, I love making beef stew and actually putting these on top. These are a great addition to anything. And you, you, even with a beef stew and you put these on top, these are almost act like bread rolls. They're so soft and fluffy. Okay, so I'm going to do just like we did the hard dumplings. I'm going to add water just a little bit at a time. But this one we want it to be slightly softer when we're finished. Not so much of a dough. So this is our finished dough and as you can see it's a little softer than the last one and a little wetter and this one we're not going to break up we're actually going to spoon this and put this on the top just before we finish the soup and we're going to sit this here for a little while because it will raise a little bit so our soup's been cooking for approximately 15 minutes things are softening up Looking really good. Smells absolutely delicious. There's a scotch bonnet right there in the corner. Keep those out of the way. So now we're going to go ahead and first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add fresh black pepper to this. About a teaspoon or so. I like adding at this point because it doesn't wash out and lose a lot of its flavors. Uh, fresh ground black pepper. Now I'm going to add my chicken at this point. I've already tasted my soup and has great flavor. I even added a little water. There's always a little short on water and you can do that. If you add water, you can add more uh, chicken baste or some seasoned salt to bring the flavor back up. Okay. And now we're going to go ahead and add our dumplings, our hard dumplings, which are right here. Just drop those in the pot. And the dumplings, as I said before, would go ahead and thicken this up really well. Stir them in. Pot's quite full. Could even do with a little bit more liquid in there. Okay, bring it back to a simmer, give it about 10 minutes and then we're going to add the last ingredients which is the soft dumpling on top. Those cook very quickly, take about 10 minutes. Okay we're back to a boil and we're going to go ahead and add our soft dumplings at this point. Take a spoon like this, just drop them on top. These take about 10 minutes, 15 sometimes to, to cook through. Doesn't take long at all. And they become very large and fluffy. These two will also thicken the soup. See, already puffing up. Little balls of love. Okay. I've already taken out the scotch bonnet, some of my thyme and my pimento. And we're gonna go ahead and let this simmer again. And it should be done. 
Oh, look at that pot. And those dumplings just fluff so beautifully. I'm gonna go ahead and plate, and it's gonna be time to eat. It's feeding time. Saturday soup. Beautiful chicken soup. Look how fluffy those dumplings are. Just amazing aroma. Full of hearty, healthy vegetables and a healthy dose of scotch bunny pepper. I hope you enjoyed the video today. Please go ahead and subscribe and give me a thumbs up and knock on the notification so you know when I load up next. I really appreciate all the subscribers that I have so far and thank you for watching. You guys have a blessed day.